Do you know the enzyme tyrosinase that gives our skin its pigment, so makes melanin, as well as gives us dopamine? Well, tyrosinase is actually in plants too, and it's part of how plants turn brown when you cut them open. And so some of that process of the browning of plants happens because of like non-enzymatic processes, but some of them are actually enzymatic. And so tyrosinase is actually able to produce brown pigment from the phenol compound, so basically you have a, an aromatic ring and it has an OH group, that's a phenol, and tyrosinase can oxidize them to quinone compounds and those are actually colored. Not only are they colored, but they're toxic to insects and things. So when a plant gets damaged, what happens is it has these separate like compartments in the cell where it has the tyrosinase enzyme and then it has the substrate, so it's got those phenols. When you break the, when you like damage the cells, so when it gets like bruised or something, or when you cut it open well now what happens is that those come into contact and the tyrosinase can actually catalyze the oxidation when you give it the oxygen by like cutting it open now there are sort of like naturally occurring uh, the browning it's kind of slow but we can speed things up we can add a substrate we can add a phenol compound in this case we're adding catechol and so catechol it's got a diol so it's got two two oh groups next to each other tyrosinase really loves it it'll make it a nice brownish burgundy color and so you can actually take advantage of this in the lab to do some cool chemistry and study enzyme we doing this in my chemistry lab this morning and it's a lot of fun so if you were to just let browning happen naturally it's kind of boring but you can actually go and if you add catechol well now you get a lot more intensive action one thing too that you'll notice is that the catechol you can see that like there are certain places like there's probably a bruise here and so the cells like were in more contact like those two like parts of the cell so the plastids where the enzymes were and the vacuoles where those phenolic substrates were those kind of get like they combine and so the enzyme gets in contact with the substrate and you get more of the activity in that in that place although it's kind of weird because here we're adding extra substrate so I don't know, maybe it just also had some more of the enzyme in that place. So in my lab class, what we're actually doing is we're preparing an enzyme extract, very crude extract. And so basically we take a potato, we cut it up, we smush it up with a mortar and pestle, we add sodium fluoride, we then kind of transfer the liquid into a conical tube, spin it down, we gotta try out the brand new centrifuge, ooh, ooh. And then you take that supernatant and call, that's your enzyme solution. Keep it on ice. Now add drops of it to various substrates, test their substrate selectivity, as well as do things like heat up your enzyme extract and do things like add a chelator because tyrosinase needs copper. So yeah.